Hello, my name is Diego Ruiz. I'm Andrew DeMello. Dylan. And I'm Matthew Ferreira. And our topic is quantum tunneling. So what is quantum tunneling? Quantum tunneling is a process by which particles can tunnel through a potential well. These potential wells can take a variety of forms, such as the energy difference between conformations of a compound and the difference between two molecules. One thing that's very unexpected is that the strain or increasing strain of a compound can result in larger potential differences over a smaller change in distance. And so an increase in the strain of a compound can actually result in increase in the probability of quantum tunneling. Classical physics, uh, particles will need a high amount of energy to overcome an energy barrier. If the energy of the particle is less than the potential energy, then the particle will not pass through. But in quantum mechanics, particles can tunnel through an energy barrier. The probability of the particle tunneling through energy barrier decreases as the mass increases. So here we have factors that affect quantum tunneling. There are two main factors that will affect quantum tunneling, which are the size of the potential well and the size of the particle. So here we have a small skit on the bottom displaying Romeo and Juliet, with Romeo being too large to pass through the wall. But if he gets smaller, then he will be able to pass through. So next we have quantum tunneling in space. So in space, there's a background radiation called the cosmic microwave background all throughout space, which accounts for about three Kelvin worth of energy. And this temperature is much too cold for pretty much any classical chemical reactions to occur. But due to quantum tunneling, compounds are able to tunnel through the potential well represented by the activation energy and still undergo reactions and conformational changes. For example, oxalic acid interconversion was able to be seen at 170 degrees Kelvin, but it took a time between about 30 to 360 hours. So it is much slower than conventional chemical reactions. One of the most interesting examples where this can be seen is nuclear fusion in the sun. So the classical probability of fusion for any collision event between two hydrogen atoms to form helium is about 10 to the minus 290 power or zero. With quantum tunneling, however, the ability to tunnel through the coulomb barrier in order to get the ends closer together where they can then fuse results in a potential or a probability of about 10 to the minus 31st power, which while still extremely low, the sun is large enough that that does result in a realistic probability of occurring. With quantum tunneling, there has been certain phenomena observed by scientists in many different applications. One particular phenomena is called domino tunneling, which explores a tunneling mechanism that exhibits domino-like behavior during conformational changes. This, these kind of conformational changes were observed during a 2015 study on oxalic acid, where under cryogenic conditions, oxalic acid was able to in experience conformational changes, regardless of the temperature, which would prevent a reaction completion to proceed. And so here's a demonstration which shows oxalic acid under cryogenic conditions at around 3 Kelvin, where we have the oxalic acid compound prevented by a barrier, but due to quantum tunneling, is able to penetrate this barrier and proceed through without needing the necessary energy. So as a result, oxalic acid can experience a rotational change, a conformational change, which introduces more internal hydrogen bonding. The same is said for the next activation energy barrier, which is also penetrated through with quantum tunneling. And as a result, oxalic acid experienced another conformational change, which overall increases the internal hydrogen bonding in the compound. As a result, this compound experiences a decrease in energy and more internal hydrogen bonding. Overall, the decrease in energy is what helps increase its stability for the compound. This is an example of domino tunneling with the compound being able to decrease down, have domino-like behavior as it falls down. 
In addition to domino tunneling, another phenomenon has also been observed previously called heavy atom tunneling, which considers the idea that heavy atom containing compounds, which contain carbon, are able to undergo quantum tunneling processes, where originally the thought was that quantum tunneling could only be carried out by compounds that contain hydrogen or helium atoms since their mass is so low. This phenomenon has been supported by the kinetic isotope effect with it having a direct influence on the tunneling rate on these types of reactions that have occurred and have been observed to undergo quantum tunneling processes such as decomposition, armorization, and conversion reactions. From these reactions, it has been observed that the linear behavior developed from the Arrhenius equation has had certain deviations which contradicts the classical thought and as a result introduces the quantum mechanical thought. And as observed from these equations, the Arrhenius equation has temperature dependency in it. However, quantum tunneling is not temperature dependent and can occur under cryogenic condition. And as a result, a new relationship has been established called the probability of tunneling, which considers the energy barrier, width, and particle mass to determine the probability of being able to tunnel through. And as a result, heavy atom tunneling has been supported by this relationship. So another quantum tunneling phenomena is the promotion of auto-ionization events in hydrogen bonding between water molecules. Um, so chemical bonds are not transient. They are constantly vibrating, going back and forth. That's what this probability distribution of various states shows, where uh, Q is equilibrium bond length. And so as you see, the probability distribution bleeds beyond the classical potential barrier, which is the parabolic potential uh, energy function. And uh, this coupled by the oxygen hydrogen bonds relatively large zero point energy promotes auto ionization because the displacement from equilibrium bond length can get so great that the distance between the proton donor and the proton acceptor and the proton that's being shared is equivalent. And that's shown by this diagram on the bottom. And the hydrogen bonding is important in biological systems. That's why this diagram of the electron transport chain is shown because our body needs to transfer hydrogens to make a proton gradient to make ATP. These are our references. Thank you for listening.